What's up guys, welcome back to the Fully Spooled. This is part two of the fuel system. I'm under the car today talking to you because a lot of this episode takes place down here and I couldn't actually show every little twist of the wrench that I normally do on Fully Spooled. So there's gonna be quite a bit of voiceover and some text to let you know kind of what's going on. But for the most part, just kind of bear with me as I kind of try to show you everything that I'm doing under the car. Now, when I originally installed the fuel rail, I had the inlet on the driver's side, but I decided to flip it around to the passenger side to make more room for the fuel hose. Thankfully, this fuel rail is symmetrical and works both ways. Okay, so we had the fuel rail installed and flipped 180 degrees, so the inlet's on the passenger side. I can take my fuel line, which is 3 8 inch uh, braided stainless steel, and then I've, I've already installed an AN fitting on this side, which will just go to the fuel rail like this. And then I'm going to run this hose to the back of the car to figure out how long it has to be, chop it down, and then I can get my FPR installed. So we'll attach the fuel line here to the fuel rail. And then I got to figure out how much slack to leave this line going to the back of the car so as the engine, you know, vibrates, it doesn't pull on the fuel hose. Something like this seems about right. And then I can start attaching the hose down here once I figure out how long it needs to be. And now you see why I put it on the passenger side because with all the stuff going on on the driver's side between the brake booster and the master cylinder and all the lines and everything, it makes way more sense there's like nothing over here. Well, before I can install this new stainless steel line, I have to go through and remove this mess of tubes back here, which is what's left of the original factory fuel lines. Hey Finn, can you pass me that socket, buddy? The socket right there on, yep, by your paw, that one. No? Okay. That is one big mess of lines up here. I'm not sure how I'm going to get all this stuff out. All of these lines go up and over the rear subframe. So they all go through here, up and here, on top of the subframe, and they come out up top there. All right, there's no way around this. I'm going to have to drop the subframe to get the fuel lines out. I wasn't planning on doing this quite yet. I was going to wait until I was ready to weld the differential to drop everything, but I might as well get it out of the way now, run my fuel lines, and that way I can get the engine started sooner than later and take care of the differential later on. So both brake lines are undone and the struts are undone on top. So now I should be able to take off these eight bolts holding on the mounts and then the two big bolts up top and drop the whole thing down on my jack. So with the subframe lowered, I can get my hand up there now and pull all of these gas lines out. There's one out. Oh, it's gasoline. Number three. What a mess. Well, that was kind of a pain in the ass, but the fuel lines are all out of the car. And I'm going to figure out how to dispose of all this crap, but I actually weighed them and it's 5.8 pounds for all three lines. So. Not a lot of weight savings, but you know, I'll still take six pounds of weight savings over not having it. So here we have the Corvette C5 fuel filter and FPR in one little package. This is the inlet, and then this is the output to the fuel rail, and then this is the return to the fuel tank. This is 5 16 inch, and then I have a push on EFI fitting here, which is a 6 AN here, and then a 6 AN on this side as well. It's going to be impossible to show me installing the FPR on camera because of the location, but it's going to go in this bolt hole right here. And I'm just going to install this guy and then I'll show you how it looks afterwards. Here's the fuel filter all mounted up. Now I need to run the lines. And to do that, I got these cushioned hose clamps here, which I will use to surround the line like this. And then you just kind of bend it down and then you just screw this into the bottom of the car all the way back. Oh, my God. 
All right, I have all the hose clamps on the bottom part of the car here, and for the top part here, I'm gonna actually reuse the factory heat shield that goes, how does this thing go? Which goes in here like this, and will uh, keep the exhaust from heating up my fuel hose too much, and it just makes sense, you know, I already have this factory piece that's designed for this exact part of the car, I should just reuse this. So I'm gonna reinstall this guy, and then the fuel hose will kind of just rest up on top of it, coming up to the fuel rail. All right, so at this point we have our new FPR and filter mounted up top here. And then you can see the stainless steel line just below that, which is coming from the front of the car right there. So I just need to figure out how much length I need to get from where I am now to the FPR and then just trim it down to fit exactly how much I need. And then I can use the rest of the line to go from the FPR up to the tank. Well, the way to do this the right way would be to take out the entire fuel line put it in a vise and then cut it, but I'm not doing any of that and I don't have a vise, so I'm just going to cut this right here. And of course we do this just so the stainless steel shielding here doesn't fray when we cut it. Nice and clean cut. work well after going through this whole process I have some advice if you're doing an fitting for your first time and that is give yourself plenty of slack because if you look at this I have one two three four five six seven uh, nine attempts at getting the an fitting to work on the very first one you know the first hose end and it took me nine times before I finally got it on so give yourself plenty of slack so I guess it's like about six inches of of space that I that I ended up cutting off at the end of the hose and thankfully I had enough slack that I could still make it fit but that is a huge margin of error that I gave myself and I would recommend anybody doing this for the first time to do the same thing. All right there's a fuel line all hooked up and uh, I put it in this direction here because I wanted to make sure that the hose going straight back never went kind of sideways so in case I went over some road debris I wouldn't you know, clip something that would pull my, my fuel hose off. So this goes straight from the front all the way back and then it kind of comes up here to go around the axle. So hopefully that'll be nice and sturdy. Looks pretty good. And for the last one here, I took a pre-existing bolt that was going through the floor and I put a nut on it. Well, after my fun experience in the back of the car, I decided for more of a headache and, and reconfigure the front a bit. I don't really think this was a good idea having it coming all the way out here and down. So I got this 90 degree 6 a.m. fitting and I'm going to install this here so I can have this line going back instead of out. It is such a better install. It's nice and clean and out of the way. Here's what I've come up with for the return line. I'm not entirely sure I'm happy with this yet because it does get fairly close to the top of the axle. It's about maybe two inches off the top of the axle. So uh, I don't know. But uh, for now, I'll leave it as it is, and then later on, maybe I'll figure out something else. Uh, that's it for now. On to the high pressure line. <sighs> this is gonna suck. Oh, it went on. It's amazing. It's so much easier. So a little bit of lubrication. That went way, way easier. I don't know what brand this is, but that was a much, much easier install. So much easier. So if you haven't made AN lines before, the tricky part obviously is getting a clean cut, but then also you have to get the line in without having any of the braiding coming undone. And then the, the last part, which is tricky is, if you can see in here, that's where the actual rubber part of the line is. You have to put this 
piece inside that rubber hose right there and then screw it down. And when you're screwing it, all it wants to do is push the actual radius stainless steel line back out. So what I'm gonna do is actually take my Sharpie and just kind of draw right here on the stainless steel line to see where my fitting goes. And then if I see that starting to go down, I know that I'm actually pushing the fitting off instead of pushing the fit this part in. And you can see here that the line is still right up where I put the fitting. So that means that the blue part's going into the red part instead of just pushing the hose off. There we have my fuel tank to FPR high pressure fuel line. Went way smoother than I thought it would. So there we have the FPR and the filter mounted up top there with the stainless steel line coming out of that for the feed going to the tank right there. Uh, please be in focus. And then we have a rubber line coming out of the, the uh, return going up there as well. I'm pretty happy with how this whole thing turned out. I might go through and replace that uh, rubber line with a stainless steel just for my own peace of mind. But otherwise, there's the entire fuel system taken care of. And of course we had the fuel line going from the rear axle all the way to the front of the car. And then it ducks behind this factory heat shield up there. And it ends up at the fuel rail. All right guys, that's everything. The fuel system is officially installed and good to go. I'm kind of amazed that it's all done. I feel like I, I, I didn't do the work, but it's all done now somehow. But So we have the fuel injectors and the rail installed. The fittings, the line back to the FPR. The FPR is installed, all those fittings. My AN nightmare is over. So I'm super happy this is all taken care of. Fuel-wise is ready to start, um, which is super awesome. So up next, I'm gonna be doing some wiring and um, you know, we're getting down to the, the last stretch here. So I'm really excited about the progress. Thanks for sticking with me with this whole thing. And uh, please keep watching Fully Spooled and uh, like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.